Central Bridge, it was called. Now the McCombs Dam Bridge. And the bridge is a swinging type bridge. I don't know if, when the last time it was actually moved was, but I love this sign. It just feels very old timey with all the new stickers on it and everything. And I guess this is where whoever operated the bridge would sit and wait for boats. As much as we like things to stay the same, things change all the time. Take the San Francisco Giants. Before they were the San Francisco Giants, they were the New York Giants. And when they were the New York Giants, they played at a stadium called the Polo Grounds. After 75 years in New York City, the Giants went west in 1958, and the Polo Grounds were demolished in 1964. Fun fact though, the fledgling New York Mets played there before moving to Queens. The Polo Grounds was located in the southeast corner of Washington Heights, right on the Harlem River, within sight of a certain famous ballpark in the Bronx. The Giants and the Yankees actually played together at the Polo Grounds until 1923, when the Yankees were, well, they were kicked out of the Polo Grounds and forced to build their own stadium in the Bronx. Now in 1918, the Interboro Rapid Transit Company extended the 8th Avenue elevated line into the Bronx and connected to the Jerome Avenue line, so, once the Yanks built Yankee Stadium, it was possible for the fans to take the subway or the train to all the games. Thus, the Subway Series was born. The city of New York built public housing in the Polo Grounds Place. And as for the 9th Avenue L, there's not much left. The bridge and any trace of it is completely gone. I can't see any evidence of this L line. There is an old staircase that goes down here. I don't know if that's relevant or not. Uh... Apparently the tunnel under 162nd Street still exists, though I couldn't find it. There's this former station on Jerome Avenue. From here, the tracks go, would have gone straight through what is now Yankee Stadium. And there's the part where the 9th Avenue L trains would connect with what is now the four line. There is where the elevated train would go. And all I've done is just cut to where it no longer uh, turns into the park. There's actually a- The Yankees destroyed the last section of track when they built a new Yankee stadium across 161st Street from the old one in 2008. There's a bit of controversy, I think, still about Yankee Stadium having moved across the street and um, this year with COVID, although maybe when this episode comes out, it'll be 2021. But uh, 20 in 2020, COVID, there were all these uh, signs that popped up in the neighborhood suggesting that the Yankees had not been doing well at helping to support the local businesses and uh, just in general, not just during COVID times, but that they were sort of like these outsiders who had come in and play baseball and then disappear and not help local businesses. I, there was a diner when I first moved to this neighborhood that just outright closed and I was like how could that happen? I mean this is this should be a very vibrant place. Not that baseball stadiums have been generally in great neighborhoods at least not in New York but I mean look at like look at all this cool art and architecture going on here like there's some neat stuff. There are good reasons to support this part of the Bronx. And uh, the people here, you know, they, they want the Yankees to, I think the part of it is paying their fair share, paying taxes, giving back to the community a bit more, uh, being more present in the neighborhood. Uh, this was a neighborhood that, like many neighborhoods in New York City, had high crime rates and uh, a lot of uh, drug users and things like that, historically. I know this from talking to my neighbor who's lived here his whole life. But it's it's gotten much better now. It's, uh, the, the neighborhood polices itself, and it does, I think, a really good job of that. But then you've got this institution, multi-million dollar institution, 
sitting in the middle of it and not really contributing at all to to the local economy i mean maybe a few bars and this this summer obviously was the worst because there was no baseball there was nothing there were no concessions to anybody so well there was baseball but not the fans coming in and, and all of that stuff so see the drum avenue line is there the four just past us and uh, if you're looking you can see that there's a there's a lower level to this the lower one is where the 9th avenue l would come and join up with the drum avenue trains so there would have been trains just here just here going along and up and uh the track's all gone they you know but i guess it doesn't make sense to take it all down because they probably have to rebuild all of this structure so they just leave it so there's a parking garage here. On the other side is Yankee Stadium and then there's this brown brick uh, New York Transit, New York City Transit building, which I think is a, like a power substation and maybe does some other things. It's a little cold today, so I'm gonna put the camera away, but uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this little walk through New York City history. Its history is tied so much to it's transportation, how to help people get around the city, and also it's, it's activities. People love baseball. It's a big baseball city. And I think a lot of fans, baseball fans, were upset when both the Giants moved and the Dodgers moved west to California. But on the other hand, it expanded baseball, probably made it, is, it, it, made it what it is today, uh, a nat really, truly a national sport and not just uh, an East Coast one. So thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye.